Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, April 11, 2016 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Could we have the roll call, please? Council Chair McCausland? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. And Councilor Sullivan? Here. Thank you. Will you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item is Town Council Reports and Correspondence. I have just two quick items. The first one is that the school board has sent us a notice saying that they have announced they have two finalists. For the superintendent position, I know that they have been working very hard on that process. At the same time, they've been incredibly busy on the budget process. I wanted to thank them for their hard work in that, and I think that they are expecting that position to be filled by June. I also wanted to mention that the um, Spurwink School Repurposing Committee, I'm not sure that we have a more formal name for it than that yet, but that kickoff meeting for that committee has been moved back to May 4th in part because of some scheduling conflicts that we had with the council and the school board. So we'll have to get that started in May. That's it at my end. I don't know if any other council members have something to say. Yes, Caitlin. Um, just a quick update from the ordinance committee. We've been meeting several times. We've completely redrafted the boards and commissions ordinance and have done a once through and we'll be meeting again on May 5th at 1.30 to be continuing our work. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Patty. Yeah, I just want to update the council that the uh, Alternative Energy Committee met on um, March 29th. We're off to a really great start. It's a super group. Um, and the next meeting will be on Tuesday, April 19th. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? No? All set? Okay, we'll move on. Finance Committee report. Are, are you speaking to that or are you, Mike? Well, I will, uh, I will just, um, the, the monthly financial update is in your packet. Yep. And I will just mention that the Finance Committee is scheduled to meet on April 26th and potentially on the 27th to review the school budget. Uh, the Town Council will meet on April 26th and the 27th to also set a public hearing on the budget and the public hearing on the budget will be on May 9th, and the meetings will take place in the conference room on the lower level of the um, council chambers. Thank you. Mike, did you want to speak to anything on the uh, monthly financial update? No? Did any council members have any questions on that? No? I have one quick question for you, Mike, and that's on the cable franchise fee. It's a very small amount of money. Looks like it is down by about uh, I don't know, two or three percent this year. Is there a reason for that? Are we yes. <laughs> yes. Can you enlighten yeah, us? We receive a check once a year from Time Warner Cable for the franchise fee, and the franchise fee is made up of five percent of their revenues from Cape Elizabeth, mm -hmm. from all the different service fees, whatever. And I think it's no secret Time Warner Cable has competition. We see all the, the ads on TV for Direct TV and for the Dish Network and you know Netflix and you name it. And as a result, there's uh, fewer people utilizing the service in <coughs> Time Warner, and that reflects uh, ultimately in a revenue decline mm -hmm. in our franchise fee. Okay. Thank you. Molly, just a quick question. Yes. Sorry. Um, on the public works vehicle maintenance, they're showing that it's at 116% of budget. Was that from the, the vehicle that they purchased, or? The equipment maintenance and public works? Yeah. The, the overage? Yeah. Yeah, it's primarily, it's just, you know, every so often you just have bad luck, and you know, we, we try to keep equipment as long as we can. And we've had some uh, major equipment failures this year uh, that have resulted us not only in, in work being need to be done in our own garage, but also contra contracting out work. And, you know, fortunately, we had savings on salt and overtime. Uh, otherwise, the public works budget would, would be a challenge. We expect the public works budget by June 30 overall to the service. But you know, it's a good question. Equipment maintenance uh, really has taken has taken a hit this year. Thank you. Anyone else? No. 
We'll move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our next item is the citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Do we have folks who'd like to speak tonight? I think you know the drill. Come up, give us your name, your address, and uh, we try to limit remarks to about three minutes. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mark Mayone, Spurman Grout and Gun Club. Um, Spurman Grout and Gun Club is asking the Town Council to amend Section 23-7-4 uh, in relation to liability insurance. We are asking, and I don't think I need to reread the liability insurance portion of that, um, we are asking for a reduction of the $3 million per occurrence of liability insurance to $1 million per occurrence of liability insurance. This is in line with the industry standards for shooting range uh, insurance coverage and is the maximum coverage offered by the NRA. The NRA has 92, over 9,200 affiliated ranges. We ask for this underneath the hardship exemption, section 23, dash 13 dash one of the shooting range ordinance which states in our opinion uh, all the results of hardship culture hardship results from application of the ordinance we think we're actually a poster child for the exemption clause for this uh, for asking for this uh, reduction in our insurance policy and uh, our required insurance and furthermore uh, when this insurance was asked for uh, by the shooting range, our shooting range was a much different design than it is now. You could, uh, we're very proud of what we've built down there. Uh, you could pick up our shooting range and put it in a, in a playground in the middle of Portland and feel safe. So considering those, uh, considering what we've done, we believe that the reduction is warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tammy Walter. I'm the president of the Spurwink Rod and Gun Club, and I live um, at 1095 Sawyer Road in Cape Elizabeth. And I literally wrote this one minute ago because I wasn't going to say anything, but I changed my mind. Um, as you all probably know, LD 1500, an act to protect and promote access to sport shooting ranges, has been signed into law by our governor. I want to assure all of you that our commitment to safety is as solid as ever. Um, we are proud of our town council, town officials, and town employees. And I want to thank you all again for all your hard work and commitment and fairness to the Spurwink Running Gun Club. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? No? Seeing none, I will uh, move on to the town manager's monthly report. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair McCloskey. Chair? Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yes, Chair. Uh, Not Chairman. We change the title every year, so uh, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Anyway, I wanted to do an update on a couple of odd things. First, we just <laughs> heard a request from the Rod Gun Club uh, that they want an amendment to the uh, shooting range ordinance uh, involving insurance. The process, now that we have this, you know, the deadline to have something on the council agenda is the first of the month, so this would go on to the, the May agenda for possible referral uh, to the ordinance committee if uh, it would be the council's judgment whether or not to make that referral. Uh, second, uh, there's been a lot of questions about LD 1500, uh, the, the, the new state law uh, that will be effective in 90 days after the legislature adjourns. Uh, and how that impacts uh, Cape Elizabeth and our shooting range ordinance. Uh, the ordinance committee discussed it briefly uh, last week and asked for us to have an attorney look at it. Uh, they did it in conjunction with looking at the membership. They were looking at the, they were looking at the ordinance in conjunction with the membership. Anyway, uh, uh, we are going to have uh, Tom Leahy look at that. Ken Cole, who, who had done our earlier work on the fire range ordinance, is retired. Uh, so Tom Lee, he's our regular attorney, so we're, we're asking Tom to take a look at, at what impact, if any, uh, that might have on our ordinance. I also wanted to mention that a while, you know, it must be almost a year ago now, the town council had asked uh, the main department of transportation to look at the speed limit up here in the town center in Route 77, 
And actually, back on March 4th, I, I got an email from Maureen. I, I got a call from her. She followed up with an email. And I didn't initially report it because they said they were going to send it in writing, MDOT, but, but they still haven't done it. So let me read from her email just as an update. Uh, Mike heard from Tim Susie today, no change to town center speed limit. I forwarded his message to your voicemail. I spoke with him and asked him to provide a written notification, which he will probably send to you. I did ask what we might do to affect a change in the future. He made it clear the speed limit is, Maureen put in quotes, reactionary to the 85 percent percentile of speed actually traveled. If we continue with our plan for village style development with sidewalks, et cetera, the speed may reduce, and then they would consider lowering the speed limit. End, end of email. It, it, what's meant by this 85 percentile of speed actually traveled is you know, that they're not if everyone's sort of driving at the speed limit right now, they're not inclined to change it. If there were conditions that were slowing down traffic, you know, in a natural way, and they saw a suggestion of some issues, they would lower the speed limit. So it's, it's almost, uh, you know, something has to happen in order to do it. But the, the, the basic response is they, they've said no, uh, and uh, they said to put it in writing, but they haven't. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Did you have a question, sir? I had a question on the last point. Do you think Mr. Leahy will be finished with looking at it by our next ordinance meeting? When are you meeting? On the 5th. May 5th. What? What's the date? May 5th. May 5th. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Good. Uh, I did want to also make mention, uh, actually, I've got this one on my phone. Uh, Back in March, you know, we, we often look at employees and what, what they're called, called upon to do. And I, I want to mention uh, Tom Perkins, who is a member of our public work staff. And back on, on March 9th, he was down at the, the pond at Fort Williams Park, you know, right, right as you go in the old main gate there. And, you know, while he was there, a dog had broke through the ice and, and was unable to get out. And, you know, he, he was asked by the supervisor to, to give an account of it. And, you know, and I'll read a little bit from it. Uh, he was installing tennis nets on the lower courts of Fort William. Uh, while, while he was doing it, he heard a woman's voice yelling for help. He looked up from tying the end of the net, and standing at the pond's edge was the woman leaning over the far side of the pond wall. He stopped what he was doing, headed toward the pond. He saw that her dog had broken through the ice. Uh, he continued around the pond, trying to see if there was any way he could help. As he reached the area where the dog was, he could see the dog was trying to pull itself out of the ice, but was unable to get a grasp on it. He looked around, didn't see anything that could help. There were some rocks on the back side of the pond that extend out in the pond. I made my way out onto them in an attempt to reach the dog. Unfortunately, it didn't extend far enough with the cat nine tails there. He, he realized he needed to enter the water to get him. Uh, so he, he made his way into the pond. He had to break the ice away to get to the dog. As he got to the dog, it was still trying to make its way up onto the ice, but was getting tired. He reached over and put his arms around the dog, pulling it toward me. The dog was scared and was still trying to get up on the ice. The water was chest deep, making it difficult to control the panicking dog. He worked his way to the edge of the pond with the dog, where he was met by the dog's owner. She reached down and grabbed the dog by the collar and helped her get the dog up onto the wall. He climbed out of the pond. She thanked him, and has, I know, subsequently as well. Uh, He uh, then uh, the, the, had conversation with, with the dog owner and uh, wished her and the dog well, a wonderful day, and they parted ways. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, that wet. was Jim Green, who was you know, one of his, the, super, the, the public works foreman, uh, forwarded that to us. And just, uh, you know, obviously, you know, when a, an employee goes into the water, chest deep in yes. the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. uh, something that should be noted and, and recognized, and we appreciate Tom's, Tom's efforts. So. Other than that, just a couple of quick things. Uh, we, we've had, you know, I, I always hesitate to mention people who have passed away, because you, you don't include everyone. But there, there, there's two that I, that I do want to mention. Uh, one is Fred Moore, and Fred was a, a longtime town engineer. Uh, he, he worked, he actually worked for us many, many years ago when he worked for Hunter Blue T.Y. Lynn, and then then we, we left T.Y. Lynn when they got too big. And then we went with Oast Associates. And then after, 
after we were working with Steve Harding for a number of years, Fred came over to Oast Associates and has actually continued to do a lot of work for us, a lot, overseeing a lot of sewer projects, uh, uh, you know, just so many, so many projects in Cape Elizabeth. And he, he died very unexpectedly a couple of weekends ago and, uh, you know, just, just a great guy and uh, did, did an, awful, an awful lot uh, for the town. And the second one uh, is, is a woman named Emma Kennedy. And, I know Caitlin knows Emma, and some of the rest of you do, but Emma was 96 years old. Uh, in fact, her wake has just got over down at, down at Hobbs, uh, her, her funeral services tomorrow. But Emma, Emma uh, was the head of the cafeteria in the school for, for many, many years, food service. Kathy is acknowledged, and she, she remembers her. And she was also Billy Jordan's sister, uh, who was you know, a, a counselor in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, but in, in Emma's husband, uh, Art, was, was a fire volunteer as well. And in the old days, there was a, there was a cafeteria downstairs here in the town hall. And on the night, oftentimes on the night of council meetings, Caitlin used to, I remember Caitlin being held by her, her, her mother. It was, you know, she's a little younger than I am. And she used to go to those fireman <laughs> suppers. But oftentimes it would be Ruth Jordan, Billy's wife, and Emma were in the kitchen. And every October would be corned beef and cabbage. And, whatever it was, but just, you know, it was, it was back when it was a different time and a different era, but, uh, you know, Emma, Emma uh, will be missed. She has lots of extended, she's related to a lot of people in town, uh, a lot of nieces and nephews, youngs and Jordans and uh, Kennedys and uh, so many others, but just a, a wonderful lady, and uh, I know her family will miss her and everyone who knew her as well, so thank you. Thank you. We'll move on. The next item is the review of the draft minutes of the March 14th, 2016 council meeting. Do I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion, comments, changes? No one? All in favor? None opposed? Thank you. We'll move on to item number 51-2016, the Fort Williams Park miscellaneous fees. I think, Mike, you'll be introducing this item tonight. Or I also know we uh, have the Mark's, yeah. chair of the yeah. Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I think he told me before the meeting he'd be happy to answer questions. Would you like to come up and say anything before we get started? Come up to the podium. Evening. Uh, not much to say here. This is a recommendation from the commission to the council. Uh, we actually spent quite a bit of time on this, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we have a motion? No, I, I, you know, you did receive some communication on this from Gene Gross at Portland Headlight. You know, other, other than that one issue, which, uh, you know, you may want to talk about a little bit. You know, I think the other is pretty routine. Uh, they went through, I really appreciate the committee taking the time to go through all the different fees. And you can see they do have a few recommended changes. Mm -hmm. uh, most, I don't think there's any going down, maybe. Uh, most, mostly going up. Uh, but uh, and these these would not be effective until next season. Uh, December. Yeah, for December one of 2016. So you make so recommendations plan. for uh, December so that uh, people who need to plan about fee changes, uh, tour bus operators and um, and the like, have a chance to do that. And uh, this is the first recommended change in re in uh, fees for I think four years. Uh, we anticipate them being in place for another three or four years, um, depends on what's going on in the park. Um, we don't want to raise fees every year. We don't want to raise them a lot. Um, and we, had, we took quite a bit of uh, information in. We took information from staff, people who are directly affected with the people who pay fees and ask questions about fees. Uh, I spoke with Mike personally about this. I spent a lot of time with Bob about it. Uh, and we took some uh, information from you at the budget meeting. So that, this is the result. Yeah. Very helpful context. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Just one point of clarity, because some, someone may be watching on cable. And you know, the, 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 these are miscellaneous fees. They're, they're for use of the picnic shelter, for 
uh, the, the buses that come into the park, for doing filming at the park, those sorts of things. <coughs> the, these, these are not fees for admission to the park or for parking that you sometimes hear about. So don't right. want anyone to come to the conclusion that, that that's what the council is currently looking at. If the, the fees for use of the park, particular areas of the park, time limits that the park is used, and, and things like that. You want to rent the bandstand, there's a fee for it. You want to rent one of the picnic tables out there, there's a fee for it. Okay, thank you. Could I have a motion? Patty, were you going to make a motion, or did you have a question? I just had a question, quickly. Can we wait until we have the motion? Sure, I will. So we can start the discussion. discussion. Well, so do I have a motion for uh, discussing or accepting the proposed miscellaneous fees in the park to be effective December 1st? Yes. I move that we accept the Fort Williams Advisory Commission's proposed updated fee schedule for uh, to take effect December 1, 2016. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll Thank second. you, Jessica. Any discussion? Patty, you had a question? I just had a question. Based on, um, I guess, overall use of the park, and you must have some reference numbers from, um, you know, last year, this year, is there an overall percentage of increase of revenues that you guys anticipate? Did you forecast at all? We didn't do that. Okay. And um, frankly, in the discussion, I had no particular um, um, totals of fees that have been represented, have been paid in the past. Um, but we did take into account uh, comments from people who collect these fees and get the feedback. Um, and we went through this line by line. <laughs> it was a pretty interesting meeting. Um, and you can see that some fees are slightly raised, some a little bit more. Um, but again, I think it's in the context of a long period of time, five or six or seven years, that these fees may or may not be in place. Thank you. Caitlin. Um, having received the letter from Jane Gross, what was the rationale for up upping the tour buses and van by $15 versus it seems like most other fees were 5 and $10? Um, uh, not to be trite, but uh, Willie Sutton said, why does he rob banks? And that's where the money is. This is where the money is in the park. Um, we feel that the users of the park um, who uh, generate their own revenue from use in the park, are able to um, um, pay those fees a lot better. That was the, the discussion that we had about it. Um, it uh, we didn't raise fees on people who are having a picnic there dramatically, but for people who are bringing other individuals into the park, we felt, and, and generating their own revenue from that, we felt that that was a place that we could go. Just Yes. Just FYI, the, the, the revenue from July 1 to the current is from bus and trolleys is $43,010. There's very little revenue, though, between now and June 30. Most, most right. all the buses come after July 1. Right. Other questions or comments? Yes, Kathy. Well, I think this, you know, uh, begs the question that we always talk about, which is part of the council goals. Um, which is uh, revenue generating and how much it costs for us to uh, maintain the fort and how much uh, we get for revenue um, and for that offset because I think we're all aware that it costs us more to maintain the fort than it does for the revenue that we receive and when I say we I mean the taxpayers so um, I'm not sure if Mike has any of that I didn't ask him for that but and if he doesn't, or Deb doesn't, maybe we could look at that uh, later on so that we're understanding what we're approving versus what we're spending. You know, it, it's through the chair. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the major revenue, you know, a, a lot of them are miscellaneous. For, for example, the picnic shelter fees, they're recommending going up quite a bit. The, the revenue that we generate from that is about $23,000 a year. Uh, the revenue from bus trolleys, I mentioned, is 43000 uh, The donation boxes are bringing in about $14,000 a year. Of course, we, those are donation boxes. That, that's, that's not an increase going up. Uh, the site fees, that includes the Beach to Beacon fee, uh, a little over 30000 so far this year. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's up considerably. My, 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 you know, a lot of it is the, the bus and trolley revenue is highly dependent on the number of cruise ships that, that come in uh, to, to Portland each year. And, you know, if, if we have the same number of cruise ships 
you know, this 43,000 with, with these additional fees, you know, would bring in approximately another uh, $10,000. Mm -hmm. This would be for next year. If yeah. I could just clarify, Mike, what you just said, the net impact of raising these fees on the buses and trolleys is in the $10,000 10, range. It's in the $10,000 range. Significant, okay. 10 to 15. You know, it depends because the trolley is a little bit different than the, the buses. And, and you know, some, the bus companies claim they won't come if we raise the fees, some of them, but you know, they claimed that when there was no fee and it, it went to $40, so <coughs> we don't know. And I think one of the things that, that this is my own personal feeling about this, uh, we're talking about one raising of fees in four or five years here. We're not, we're not talking about doing this every other year. Um, we think it's fair. We think it's fair. Um, as Mike said, $30,000 for usage of the park. The, the Beach to Beacon is one fee of 25 out of that $30,000. So the other fees are minimal. And we had a long discussion about Beach to Beacon. I'll have you know. This wasn't just. Thank you. Other questions, Kathy? I'll ask um, another question. I noticed that the Beach to Beacon fee did not increase, right. but many of the others did. Can you talk about that? Uh, I can. Uh, I had an extra meeting with Mike about this. Um, there was uh, plenty of, uh, of uh, a feeling on the commission that the fee should be raised, and uh, I was not one of those people. I, I think the Beach to Beacon is a gift that the, that the town uh, received a long time ago. I think that uh, that fee, which was a negotiated fee a long time ago, is an appropriate one. I think what you want to understand is that the Beach to Beacon uh, itself pays for the use of the park. They take care of all associated costs with the races and things like that. This is a, uh, on top of everything that they pay for when they use the park. Um, to me, I just didn't see it um, as something that was appropriate at this particular time. The committee also looked into other races and what, what the fees are, particularly with the Falmouth, Massachusetts race. We did. And, and the, the, no one else charges fees. We're the only, we're the only one. Hmm. Thank you. All set? Mm -hmm. Other comments, questions? Yes, mm -hmm. Jessica. Thank you. Yeah. Um, with the, um, the van and trolley uh, and tour bus fee increases, um, I think that it would be prudent to discuss the letter from the director of the Lighthouse and Museum Shop because she's concerned about an impact on the gift shop sales. Um, you know, certainly is much, if not more, on the actual fee itself. Um, and, you know, that's something that probably merits some discussion. Um, I, I don't know what the impact would be. This is about a 30% jump, um, granted, even though it's only a four year period. So, I don't know. Um, so I, you know, I think her concern is real. I mean, I think the buses will still be coming, but, you know, will that, you know, they might subsequently raise their tickets, and I don't know whether that would then tend to have people not spend as much money at the shops, the shops. So. I'm a little concerned about that. Mike, did you have a comment on that? No, I, you know, it, it's a judgment that the council needs to weigh. Uh, you know, I, I have my personal views, but you know, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not inclined to publicly disagree with, with a recommendation of a commission at a council meeting, you know, unless there's some imperative municipal reason why you ought not to do it. I accept that the committee debated it. I understand they debated it. Personally, I think it's too big an increase, but you know, the, the, they're, they're the advisory commission. Mm -hmm. They recommended it, and I, th I think the council should give due weight to their recommendation. Any other comments or questions? I just, yes. I mean, that's why I asked the question to begin with, was I, I felt it should be more reflective of the other increases. Okay. And if I could just clarify, your committee or commission's recommendations were unanimous, correct? They were. They were. Okay. Once we got to a dollar on each item, they were. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? Yes, Jessica. 
I mean, we certainly, if, you know, if the council wants to, is interested in discussing it with those particular fees, the tour bus van and trolley fees, instead of a, there's a swing to 30%, you know, we could consider, well, making them uniform at 10 or 20 and increase. I, I'm just throwing it out there. It's just something I thought ought to be discussed before we decide. Uh, and I'm they, sorry. You no, know, I'm the liaison to the commission, and they, they did deliberate a great deal. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, you know, but receiving the letter from the lighthouse director, you know, I thought, well, something to consider. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarah. So, <clears throat> just hypothetically, if we were to say, okay, 10 instead of 15 increase, we're talking about around $3,000 if it's 10 overall? It's 10 to 15. So, we're talking depending maybe on four. It mm -hmm. could be. We don't know what it's going to be like next year. We don't know right. how many. Right, it all depends on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just trying to carve out a compromise here. Although, as you've pointed out, this is the first increase in I think four years. Four years. I think four years. Okay. Yeah, it makes it a different conversation that you, you know, we're not doing this every year. That makes it harder to tease out the right, the right solution. I think this is a good question for you to tackle. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes, Caitlin. Well, it's, it's not so much that it's the first increase if we also just instituted the fees four years ago. So it's not like we've steadily gotten to 40. Like some of these other fees, I'm sure if we went back over the last few years, they started at some point and they've inched their way up to what they are now because I know I've approved a few increases while I've been sitting in these chairs. So I'm just more inclined, you know, to agree with Jessica that maybe we should go with, you know, just putting it up ten dollars, so it, it's more on par with what the other increases are. Jamie, did you have a comment or a question? I was just going to ask Mark if you could discuss maybe a little bit more on the rationale for that specific. I know you already touched on it a bit, where those are the ones that, um, you know, are generating revenue and have the um, probably the the margin and capacity to bear that, but. Um, I know I, I appreciate the Commission's effort mm -hmm. to um, focus the fees on um, those that are bringing the largest groups and as a result of that creating the biggest impact on the park. So maybe you could expand on that a bit. I can expand ever so slightly. We had members who wanted to raise it higher because they felt that um, people who generated revenue themselves from the use of the park should pay the town more. This is a this is a number that we brought down. I, 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 just a one extra comment. Um, my background is retail. I grew up in a retail family. Um, the lighthouse needs to be looked at. This is not something that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has any say over, but it is a revenue generator. It's a significant re revenue generator, um, and it can generate more. Did you want to say something? I, I don't want to respond to that because I'm, I'm not sure what the gentleman is, is, is talking about. It, it, I, don't, I don't mean that. Uh, you know, I understand. I, I'm not, he hasn't been specific, so I, I can't, I'm not going to react to something non-specific. Uh, you know, the, the, the other side of it is, is, is that the Portland Headlight Fund pays most of the expenses that are caused by the buses. They're paying for all the toilets. That, uh, the wear and tear that happens as a result of the buses, other than on the roads, is being paid for by the Portland Headlight Fund with, with the gift shop revenue. So there's a, you know, while, while the Fort Wayne's Advisory Commission can say that, you know, there's an impact on the park, you know, maybe some of those revenues ought to go to the Lighthouse Fund and, and not just to the Fort Williams Capital Fund. Caitlin. I, just remember, I think it's easier for Jean Gross to explain the increases because she comments about you know, some of the hostilities that she's encountering because she's the one who actually has to collect or, you know, those working in the gift shop have to be the ones to collect this fee. So it's a lot easier to explain all fees went up and they all went up consistent across the board. They didn't all go up consistently well, across the board. Okay, so right. most of them went up 5 to $10 and then right. these three or four, however, sorry, I don't, I don't have it right in front of me, they went up 15 I agree with so you. So they're the only ones that are more than the others. I mean, others went up two, three hundred dollars, but that's because they're bigger. Yeah, I, no, I agree. But, with you. I agree with you. 
and I'm sensitive to her comments. That's her, <coughs> that's her function here. And, and um, it was, I was under the impression initially that we did get feedback from her about this because um, uh, Bob Malley asked her. And we didn't, I, I didn't have this letter until, I didn't see this letter until last week. Certainly sensitive to her, what she's saying. Thank you. So, yes, Sarah? Sorry, quick comment. Yeah. It seems to me I'm inclined to compromise. I, I agree that the person on the ground who's talking to these people, and it balances how much they're bringing people who are spending in the gift shop. So, so when you factor that in, that perhaps a few more buses will come, it seems to me that we're talking about an extremely small amount of money for some, some goodwill. So I would be willing to support that it go up 10 rather than $15. And it make, I think it makes, I agree with Caitlin, it makes it easier for Jean to talk, and it doesn't seem like a big swing in revenue. So if other, if other counselors are inclined to do that, I, I could, I would go along with that. Is there a motion to amend limiting the increase to the buses and trolley uses to $10? I can make that if you'd like. I'm I, sorry, did you say yes? Yes, so moved, so amended. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, well, just as a point of information, if you look at those four items, for example, the trolley 30, plus visits, it's $1,500 a season. So I'm, I'm not sure if you're intending to increase that to $1,510. What I was suggesting yeah, sure. is just looking okay. at it as a percentage standpoint, but I, you know, we might need to just look at that a little more closely before we vote, for what those figures would be. Shall we walk through those individually? I, I would recommend that. Shall we start with the first one, commercially operated passenger tour vans, $20 per visit going to $25 per visit. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion to, to Only separate if, breaking this down into individual in, items? In the, in the end, you might need an amendment. There's a motion on the, the floor to approve this. You might need an amendment, but I you know, have, I, I, wait, there's but, a motion but, to amend as well, but it hasn't been but, seconded right. yet. Okay. But yeah, but I think that there wasn't clarity on, on the, the motion okay. to amend we because like, like, you right, know, the seasonal the fees. And, yeah, it was, right. it was confusing. Okay. All right, so let's start at the beginning. The $20 per visit going to $25 per visit. Mm -hmm. everyone's, okay with everyone's okay with that. Yes? Can I ask a point yeah. of order? Are, are we, are, is, is, is there a motion to go through these line item by line item? I, I, I haven't heard an amendment to there this. There is so not. I haven't heard not. There is not. I think we're we had the original right. motion. We're having the discussion. Caitlin had made a motion that I had suggested that we limit the proposed increases to buses and trolley uses to $10. I didn't hear a second on that yet. So now we, I believe, are still having the original discussion about yeah. the fees line item by line item. But, you know, I, I think Councilor Gavin's point is if there's no amendment, maybe we ought to just move to a vote on the original motion. That's, that is yes. Do we need to vote on the original motion or are we looking yes, to there's no amendment? <coughs> if, if yes. or a discussion. Either. My point is that if we're, if I, I think somebody needs to, if, if the intent is for us to go through these line by line and discuss and negotiate the fees, then somebody should make an amendment to <coughs> that if that's the intent. The, amend, the, the current motion is to accept the recommendation um, of okay. the of the commission. Right. So. I do not want to go line by line. Oh, so I, I'll make a motion. Go right ahead. I move that we adjust the tour slash cruise ship buses from $40 to only increasing to $50 instead of 55 and the fee for pre-approval that goes from 35 to 50 only go from 35 to 45 so we have a motion now, the original motion to accept these recommendations on block, and now we have an amendment to only amend these numbers or adjust these numbers from $40 per visit to $50 per visit and from $35 per visit to $45 per visit just on those two lines, correct? Mm -hmm. No other changes. You need to ask if there's a second. Is there a second for that? Yeah, I'll second it. Thank you. Any more discussions? And we're just talking about those two changes. No other proposed changes on any other line items. No? No more discussion? We're ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Yes? So we're voting on the amendment. 
We are voting on the amendment. Yes. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that amendment has not passed. Mm -hmm. It's four yeah, votes. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed, I only saw three. Jessica put her hand up after oh, you turned I'm it. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Thank you. Did you catch those? I did. Four to three? Okay. Thank you. All right, so now we have the amendment for those fees included in the original motion. So now we're back to the original motion as amended. Any more discussion on that item? No, we're ready to vote. Yes, Kathy. I'll be voting against this uh, for the reasons that I stated earlier, which are um, I understand what people are saying and I understand Jean's um, um, concerns. But I also will come back to the fact that the council has said that we're looking to increase revenue. Um, there's been discussion about parking fees at the fort. And I think we're all clear, although we don't have the exact numbers, that the fort costs us more than it's bringing in for revenue. Um, and um, recognizing that those are taxpayer dollars, I'll be voting against it because I think that those changes are fairly small and we should be looking at trying to increase our revenues um, to what we can. So I will be voting against that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Jessica? Yeah, I respectfully disagree with <laughs> Councillor Ray. Um, I, I uh, have as one of my goals, I'll be looking at revenue generating as well along with her and the town manager. Um, I certainly think we're going to be looking at user fees in general as we go forward because so much is on the property tax payer. However, um, I think that um, to Councillor Lennon's point, goodwill is an important item, uh, an, an issue, and I think that uh, being a little more conservative on the increases on those, that section of the Fort Williams proposal um, is worthwhile, so I'll be supporting it. Thank you. Yes, Jamie. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Ray that it's important that we examine in totality uh, in a more holistic view uh, the opportunities that we have to generate revenue from the fort as well as, um, you know, look at needed investment there. Um, I don't think any of these things are mutually exclusive, though. So even if this is just a small, a relatively small incremental increase in what are already existing fees, I don't think that um, uh, passing on those benefits the end goal of, of ultimately raising the, the total revenue. So I, I stand in favor of these, and I also thank the commission for their hard work um, that was obviously put into coming up with such an exhaustive uh, process to get here. So thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? No? All in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Thank you. We will move on to item number, f and thank you by the way, thanks for coming and thanks for all your hard work on the commission. We'll move on to item number 52, the zoning violation. Mike, will you introduce this item? I'd be happy to. Uh, we recently became aware of a zoning violation at 10 Star Road. The property's in the process of being sold. Uh, when they were typically, when a property is sold, uh, do they do, do, they do <coughs> a boundary survey uh, that showed the front setback wasn't met? Uh, you know, so the council has a couple of options. Uh, one is to, uh, to do nothing, and that would make it really difficult to sell the property. Uh, the code enforcement officer could conceivably go in and say, tear down the garage and the room above it. Uh, probably not something that's easy to do with the property owner, doesn't want to see that happen. The, the second option is to have a consent agreement whereby we would agree, the council would agree, uh, that uh, you, would not, you would not take action and the existing condition uh, could remain. Uh, you know, with, the council has done this uh, a number of times over the years, uh, but not often. And they're always difficult. Uh, they're not easy, but 
you know, the other, the other option is to, to tear it down. In this particular instance, the zoning board uh, first heard the issue. Uh, there were quite a few neighbors there, fully in support of, of the property owner. Uh, did, want, did not want to see uh, the, uh, it, it have to be torn down. We are very respectful of the property owner. So, you know, my, my recommendation is that you, you do authorize the town manager to work with the town's attorney to draft a consent agreement that would come back to you at your next meeting. Uh, and that that agreement would, would uh, provide that the property owner would pay all the town's legal and filing costs for the consent agreement and would provide for a payment to the town recognizing the seriousness of the setback violation. Uh, you know, everyone asks, well, what's the amount that you know, you're talking about here? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be honest, uh, you know, we, we've tried to keep costs minimal on this. We haven't even spoken to the town's attorney yet. Uh, so, you know, I would want to get advice from the town attorney uh, on an exact amount. You know, and I've had discussions with Ben McDougall, the code enforcement officer, about this. You know, we have an amount in mind, but, but when you're negotiating with someone, you don't publicly speculate what that amount is. Uh, so I, I thought I'd mention that before we, we, we went down that road too, too far for discussion. But, but anyway, I, I see the attorneys uh, looking to say something, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions at, at the appropriate time. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is John Turcotte, and I represent Cheryl and Scott Joyce. Uh, you have the pack of the information I provide, which has the background facts, and I don't want to repeat anything that the town manager said today. Uh, basically, the property is 10 Star Road. Cheryl has lived there her whole life. The two of them bought the property in 1999. Four years later, in 2003, with a growing family, they went to put an addition on. They hired a builder, a Mr. Palanza, who since passed away. Uh, they obtained a permit. They did everything they thought that a reasonably prudent homeowner would do. And fast forward 13 years, as their children are now in 7th and 11th grade, wham, their property line is not where they thought it was. And that they are shocked and dismayed. And they've worked with the town to try to find a way to resolve it. <clears throat> as it, the town manager indicated, they went before the ZBA to get an after the fact variance. It doesn't really qualify for that which means that the, the town council is really their only way that they can resolve this. And so they're coming to you tonight, <coughs> excuse you, asking for help. Uh, the uh, code enforcement officer submitted a memo, which I believe all of you have, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Joyce are asking the town council to kind of a, uh, uh, go along with the code enforcement officer's uh, recommendation, which is to authorize the town manager to work with the town council and myself and to put together a consent agreement that works for everyone. And uh, simply as persuasive authority and nothing else, this exact same thing happened before in 2012 on uh, 21 um, Windquest Road. There was a side setback violation that no one noticed for 13 years. And it came out of the woodwork. And a consent agreement, which I've put in a tab four, was reached between the parties. The homeowners had to pay for the town's attorney's fees. And I believe they paid uh, some kind of a one-time fine, essentially. And that's really what the Joys are looking to do here tonight. They, they have come before you. They, they need your help. And they are the homeowners. They understand that they are responsible. And they're just really looking for you to help them out, please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> do we have a motion as recommended to authorize the manager to move forward with us? Patty. <clears throat> yes, I move that we offer, authorize the town manager to work with the town attorney to draft a consent agreement um, as is outlined here in this memo. Or should I read the whole? The rest of the paragraph. Are you uh, moving that we accept this as recommended in this paragraph? Yes. Second. Thank you, Caitlin. Discussion. Just, wanted, yes. just for purposes of full disclosure, the this says you're authorized from the town manager. I really believe that the code enforcement officer ought to be in the forefront of this, but the charter reads that you, you direct the town manager, you don't direct subordinates to the town manager. So I just want to say up front that it'll actually be Ben McDougall who, mm -hmm. who is doing, doing the work on this. I'll, I'll be in the background, I'm sure he'll come to me, but he'll be involved in the, the directly in the meetings. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, Jamie. I just um, wanted to ask Mike if you wanted to reiterate for those that might be watching or anything that the zoning and permitting um, ordinances and, and regulations have changed since this event had happened so that it can stop exactly this from happening again, right? So we're, we're sort of working with a bit of a grandfathered opportunity yes. here, right? Yes, sir. You know, I don't want to get into a, a debate with, with the property owner or with, or with the attorney. You know, there was a change in these, the last time one of these came to the council. The council was very upset and said, don't you ever bring us one of these again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that, you know, but that's not real. 
it's back, you know, there's another problem. But what the council did, though, was it was, it was, it was a very narrow, in, in areas where the setback is really close, is there would need to be a survey. In this a boundary survey. Yeah, in this particular, I don't think this one would have qualified for that exception because <laughs> it, it is a wider, it is, it is a bigger distance than, than my recollection is that's in that ordinance. So, but you know, but I don't want to debate those nuances. I think that the, the point is that, is that we, we, we've got a resident with a problem. Uh, probably the best thing is to come up with a consent agreement and do it. But you know, there, there are things that the attorney's written, we don't agree, Ben doesn't agree with, I don't agree with. But you know, debating that back and forth doesn't get us to the point of, of resolving this and moving forward. The point is, is, let's have a consent agreement that's relatively simple. That, that, that simply says that, you know, they're, they're absolved of what happened, uh, that the property can be whole going forward, and in, in there'll be something filed in the registry that indicates that, that uh, the council would consider next month with a, with a, a some sort of a, I don't, I don't want to get into what the language might be, we haven't had the discussion yet. But, yeah. I merely wanted to point out that Previous councils have made an effort to sort of close the barn door on, the, on this so that it does not continue to happen going they forward. They did, and you know, and, and if I, you know, if I strictly listened to what that council said at the time, you know, we, we would have told this applicant it's not coming back. The council addressed it this way. This is the way to address that. But, but that's not due process. Due process is them being here and having this opportunity. And it, the way our community works, I think you try to work with people when they're in a tough situation. Anyone else? Comments? Questions? We're ready to vote. All in favor of the motion? Any opposed? No? Passes unanimously. Thank you. So, Thanks for coming. So the plan would yes. be to get this resolved in the next couple of weeks to come back at the May meeting uh, with the consent Sweet. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. It's stressful. It's really, it's really stressful. We will move on to item number 53, gift acceptance. Mike, will you be introducing this item? I, am, uh, I was going to ask you if I could, but I didn't have a chance <laughs> to talk to you before the meeting. We have um, a gift from the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation, a check in the amount of $570,000, $570,069.71, <clears throat> for library furnishings, shelving, technology, the outdoor garden, and the other amenities for the new Thomas Memorial Library. It is recommended to accept the gift with gratitude to all those who supported the library capital campaign through individual giving and through volunteer efforts, and I will just add my own personal thanks to the foundation and to the capital campaign committee and to all of our donors as well. Do we have a motion to accept that gift? Patty? Sure. I move that we accept that gift with gratitude um, to all and, and to thank all those who supported the library capital campaign. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank second. you. Thanks, Kathy. Any discussion? Yes, Sarah. I'd just like to echo that gratitude. This is an absolutely amazing figure right here. It's incredible, not only for all the people who gave, but the incredibly hard work of the committee that raised all this money. My hat's off to all of you. It's, it's really speaks so well for our community. It's great. Anyone else? No? All in favor? Any opposed? That passes unanimously. <coughs> Everything that came to the council was that quick, easy, and wonderful. You sure would have a million dollars. What are we going to say? Next up. No. All right, <laughs> item number 54 recommendation for citizen communication and outreach. And Patty, would you like to introduce that item? I'm happy to. So, in um, September of last year, of 2015, we had a, um, I think, really well attended citizen roundtable to solicit input into our um, annual goal setting process and in the wake of that and because of that success uh, one of our 2016 goals is to continue and expand citizen roundtables to gather citizen input and to encourage a dialogue as part of these roundtables so we set up a council subcommittee of um, three councillors it's councillor lennon councillor garvin and i and we met on april 4th 
to discuss this goal and come back to you with recommendations which we will make this evening. Um, so for 2016, we'd like the council to consider um, accepting our recommendation to hold two outreach forums, uh, one in May and the other in September. Uh, the first of the two, May's forum, um, would be what we see as more of an open two-way dialogue for citizens. Um, to give them opportunity to kind of give some feedback on how we are doing, you know, what could we be doing better, and as well to, it would be a great timing for an opportunity for residents to ask questions about the recycling center bond referendum in June. Um, the location would be out, potentially out of town hall, you know, at a location like the library. Um, we, as far as the date, we potentially had talked about the May 23rd workshop. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm guessing, based on what I know about workshops, is you probably already have a full agenda, and that may or may not be able to occur. You can let us know. Um, but we certainly could find another date in May. And as far as marketing, um, this being that the time frame is close, we feel like there isn't a town mailing, but we feel like we could um, meet um, the deadline for the May 6th issue of the Courier, either with an insert or um, some type of notification in the courier. The second um, round table would occur then in fall, so it would be one in spring, one in fall, and the forum would be very similar to what we did last year. Um, it would remain as a community round table with input to our 2017 goal setting process. And then but all we would do is take into account some of the recommendations um, and considerations that were made post that meeting to improve upon that. Um, so with that, I guess I, what I'll do if, um, is to I would make a motion um, and then we can open up dialogue, certainly. Um, and so I would move that the council hold two community forums in 2016, May um, in, and September for community outreach. Second. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Caitlin. Discussion? I'll just, I try very hard to reserve my remarks until the end of the conversation, but I would prefer that we hold our workshop date for council business as a whole on a number of potential items that we'll have coming up by May. Um, <clears throat> I would prefer if we could find a different date in May or early June, and I am certainly aware of the, the um, ramifications of waiting until later in June. We do have a vote coming up. Um, I do think it would be helpful if we could have the meeting prior to that, but having said that, if we could find a date that is not the date of our workshop, I think that would be helpful. Um, the other thing I would say is that I am really in favor of these outreach forms. I think it's a great idea, and I like the idea that you're suggesting two different formats. I think that's very interesting conceptually, and I hope that we are successful in moving that forward. That's it for me. Who else has something they'd like to add to that conversation? That's great. No one? Sounds good. <laughs> good. Um, before we actually take a vote on that, let me ask the manager a question about how we would get that scheduled in May. If we accept this tonight and we vote in favor of the recommendation, will you be sending out some recommended dates when we could meet with the community? I would delegate it to Deborah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that Deborah's been um, our staff liaison to our subcommittee, so I would, so I would ask Deborah to reach out to all of us. I would hope that the counselors, we could all potentially come, and I would hope that Mike could be there. I think he'd be a great, um, we see it more like the paper streets, where it would be a question ask and um, a direct answer in kind of more informative format. So it would be great if we could all come and be available. Just my comment, Deborah's worked very closely with this committee. I appreciate her efforts in doing so. So I'm not about to step into the middle of it now. <laughs> okay. Jessica, did you have a question? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I was just, you said there were two different formats, and I, I, I know we just got this, and so I was reading it. And, uh, what I heard earlier, but a uh, sort of more of a Q&A format in one session, and the so-called roundtable discussion that we had last September, again, would be in the September time frame. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did that answer your question, or did you have another question yeah, no. beyond that? Good? Okay. Molly, can I, sorry, I yes. just have a quick thing. In our meeting, it wasn't quite Q&A, it was more informal conversation. 
So it doesn't have to be that people show up with a question. We won't be sitting in the front answering. It's we're going to be sort of we're hoping it's in a room where we can all sit in a circle and it's a conversation. Of course, anyone can ask us any questions, but we also are you know open to people coming and just talking or sharing or whatever. Okay, so we called it a conversation. Yes, I'd certainly like to point out to the public that, as always, we welcome emails. Um, you know, I mean, this, this certainly can be valuable, but um, we all have many meetings we have to attend, and the public is always uh, welcome to email the council at all times with their concerns and questions. So um, this certainly wouldn't, just for people at home, take the place of that. Right. Anyone else? No? All in favor of this motion? Any opposed? No? Passes unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We will move on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Anyone? No? Okay. Our next item is number 55-2016, executive session to review land acquisition, disposition matters, and to review an application for hardship abatement of property taxes. We have a draft motion in front of us. We, when we go into an executive session, have to be very specific about that. Do we have someone who would like to read that? Yes, Jessica. Yep, I'm happy to. I move that the town council in conformance with 1MRSA, subsection 405, 6C and F, enter into executive session 4C, discussion or consideration of the condition acquisition or the use of real or personal property permanently attached to real property or interest therein or disposition of publicly held property or economic development only if premature disclosures of the information would prejudice the competitive or bargaining position of the body or agency F, discussion of information contained in records made, maintained, or received by a body or agency when access by the general public to those records is prohibited by statute. In this instance, a review of a hardship tax abatement request made under 36 MRSA subsection 841. Thank you. Do we have a second? Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion on that? Hey, well, you know which yes. one you're doing first. I would assume that we will take them as they are listed in the agenda. Because we, we, the, the chairman of the Conservation Commission would be participating in the section uh, involving land acquisition disposition yes. matters. Uh, and then that is the first no, one. No one, to my knowledge, unless the applicant is here, would participate in the, the hardship abatement. And then I do want to mention the Russell Packet is also here for a meeting of the Thomas Jordan Trust, which follows the, the council meeting to look at a grant application. Any other discussion? Okay. No? All in favor? Was there, Any opposed? Was there a second? No. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes, Sarah had seconded it. Okay. Thank. Sure. But thank you for keeping me on track on, on uh, points of order. Okay, we are moving to executive session. So, 